HEED stands for Home Energy Efficient Design. HEED is a free software tool that runs on Mac and Windows computers. It is intended to help homeowners, designers, builders, engineers, architects design more energy efficient and more comfortable homes. This is the third tutorial in this series and will cover the advanced design features of HEED. It is intended for a more technical audience than the first two tutorials. The first one was an introductory overview and the second one covered HEED's basic design features. When you first launch HEED you'll see this startup screen. So let's um, start over from scratch on a new project and we'll call this project um, Advanced Design Demo. Next you'll see the initial design screen. Uh, he uses the answers you give to these few questions to design first Scheme 1, a code compliant building, and then Scheme 2, a more energy efficient building. So let's um, construct a brand new home. We'll make it a single family home. Let's um, do a one story building. Let's make it 1600 square feet just to make it a little bit smaller. It'll be a flat roof. And let's enter uh, the zip code for Mojave, California in the Mojave Desert. Uh, this is one of the tougher uh, climate zones in California. Uh, the zip code for Mojave is 93501. Next, uh, it asks if we want to attach a garage. We'll say no. Uh, it now is calculating the performance of those two homes for all 8,760 hours of the year. This is the home energy rating screen and it shows us the performance of these two buildings. Here's scheme one that's a reference building and here's scheme two that as you can see is a little bit more energy efficient. By the way, periodically he will put up uh, information screens like this that give you a clue about what to do next or help you define a term. We're going to ignore these pretty much through this tutorial. Scheme 2 uses 89% of the energy that Scheme 1 uses. Uh, let's make a copy of this now and this will be the first scheme that we'll begin to modify ourselves. In the prior tutorial we looked at uh, all of these options in the basic design menu. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the advanced design menu and we're going to look at all of these options. Let's start with the climate screen. Here is the latitude for Mojave. Uh, this shows that the Mojave climate, which is climate zone 14, uh, is pretty chilly in the winter and it gets rather warm in the summer, as you can see. California Energy Code gives us guidance on the design temperatures. This is the indoor design low 68 and the design high 75. You and your client might want to modify those but for code compliance these are the numbers that we'll use. Uh, probably the ground reflectance wouldn't be 0.2 for uh, new vegetation but rather something a little bit more reflective than that. However in this case we'll just leave that as it is. Later on, we'll show you how to use the 12-day analysis um, option. Uh, in HEED, there is a connection to one of our other programs called Climate Consultant. In this case, it's showing us the design guidelines for Climate Zone 14. And these are listed in order. Uh, they're based on details of the climate and specifics of design strategy that you may select. Uh, for instance, it says for passive solar heating, we need to face most of the glass south, provide high quality windows. Um, the internal gains are going to help us out in this climate. Evaporative cooling uh, is a good option. Um, here's one that talks about window overhangs. When you click on any design guideline, a sketch will come up that gives you more details about how to execute that in three dimensions. Um, some of the other um, options might be this one, sunny wind protected outdoor spaces. And you can spend more time studying this if you wish. 
Um, we're going to go back to Heed now. The next screen we see is uh, the envelope design summary. Uh, things that are in gray are for your information. Things that are in the white boxes you can change if you wish, if you wish to raise floor to floor height, for example, here, or if you wish to add a sloped roof instead of a flat roof. And this is information about the uh, performance of a cool roof, if you had a cool roof surface uh, on your building. The next screen we see is the surface area summary screen. This one turns out to be rather useful. We can change any of the properties, for instance, of the opaque envelope of the building. Uh, let's try this. Let's see if we can burn the west wall. Um, assume the building sort of backs up into a hill on the west side. So that means that there would be zero absorptivity. The sun would never reach that wall. Uh, we could make the um, U value pretty small. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, 0 0.015. And uh, the time lag with all of that earth and soil is going to be 24 hours. And the decrement factor would be zero. It'll be flat. Uh, let's also think about making this a super insulated building. Um, if we double the amount of insulation, the U value doesn't quite cut in half, but actually goes to a value closer to this. The uh, roof value is also going to be in reduced, which is to say there will be more insulation in the roof. And the slab edge, which it, uh, is not really the same as a U value, it's called an F factor because it represents the amount of heat loss per linear foot of slab edge, uh, can be reduced to something like 56. Let's recalculate this value and see what it did to the overall performance. So super insulating this building really had a significant impact, uh, as well as berming the west wall. Let's go back uh, to the next one on our list, which is windows and doors. Um, let's do this. Let's make a copy of this scheme three and call it optimized windows. We're going to change the windows. Just copy scheme three and call it Um, let's see what we can do. Let's try, for instance, doubling the number of south windows. Um, another thing we could do is we could probably eliminate the west window because that's now hidden by a berm. Yes, I really want to eliminate this set of windows. Uh, the north window looks to me like it's got probably too many windows, so let's um, cut that one in half. Um, and I guess we will leave the east window as it is. Uh, let's see if we made any improvement with these changes. By the way, we could have changed the U value of the window. These windows are probably code compliant as far as the U value is concerned, but the solar heat gain factor is a, a good passive window. There's a lot of solar gain that comes in this south window. So we might have taken the option of changing the solar heat gain factor or something. It depends really what the window specification is that you're using. And in this climate, it pays to use really high performing windows. The calculation shows, yes, well, we made a significant improvement. We changed it from 77% to 69%. So that was a good 8% reduction. Let's go back and try something else that we can do on the window screen. Um, 
we can add uh, various kinds of drapes and operable shading. Let's make a copy. Uh, we're going to copy four and um, do um, heavy drapes. When we get to this screen again, we can add an R value for drapes. Um, R2 is reasonably heavy drape. He automatically closes these drapes whenever they're needed. That is to say, when the window is losing energy and it's cold inside, or potentially cold inside. Um, and also, during the day, the drapes are open when daylighting is needed. So it's got a smart uh, drape control system, which otherwise is known as your mother. And as you can see, uh, if your mother opens and closes the drapes at the right time, you can see that we pick up another 4% um, improvement in energy performance. Technically, this is not allowed in your code compliance uh, submission. But it does show you that you can reduce your energy consumption by virtue of some rather modest uh, means. The next um, screen is daylighting. It's potentially more complex, but certainly it gives you some options here to try and make changes that will improve energy performance. Let's go on to the next screen, which is the thermal mass screen. It uh, lets us specify all of the mass that's on the inside of the insulated envelope. This uh, helps us dampen the temperature swings in the interior, and it helps us actually store heat in the interior. We did make this change with the bermed wall, so let's now see if we can change the thermal mass of that wall also. So we're going to make a copy of the prior scheme. And so we're going to copy five, and we'll call it um, mass wall. When we go back to the thermal mass screen, we can call this, I don't know, let's call it mass wall. Uh, it's going to be 32, the width of the building, um, and it's going to be probably 8 feet high. And there's only going to be one of them. The material can be anything, let's call it stone, uh, give it some design interest. And we can say it's going to be 12 inches um, thick. Twelve inches is actually a bit much because the although the wall can be twelve inches thick, only a small part of that wall actually participates in taking in heat and giving back heat on a twenty four hour basis and that is a function of the density and the specific heat and the conductivity. He does a calculation and will find out how much he thinks really participates in the interior space on a 24-hour basis. So it's said about nine and a half inches of stone will, will contribute uh, on an annual, on a 24-hour basis. When we calculate it, we found, well, it gave us a little bit of additional help, another 2% improvement in energy performance. Let's go back and find the next screen in our sequence which is uh, internal loads. Again, these are pretty much defined by the uh, code, but it says we have in this house of ours about three people, and this is how much heat they generate, and we have a normal residential lighting schedule. Next is the HVAC screen, and this one gives us a lot of options for change. So let's go to the library and make a copy uh, and do some HVAC system changes.
the um, options are pretty considerable. We can do all sorts of things, but let's make it fairly straightforward here. Um, we can change temperature setbacks and the amount of air that's allowed in this space, but let's do this. This is simpler. The SEER, seasonal energy efficiency ratio of the air conditioner can be greatly improved. These days a 19 is not at all unusual. And the heating system, this again reminds us that we should check back with other screens that also involve HVAC systems. Um, we can improve the annual fuel utilization efficiency of our furnace, that is to say the efficiency of our furnace. Let's just make it an energy star, which is 0.90. Um, and let's see how much change we were able to do here. Uh, we picked up probably another 3% improvement in energy performance, so we're little by little nibbling away. The next screen is the water heater. Water heaters turn out to be a big energy consumer in houses after everything else has been made as efficient as possible. We might think about using a solar hot water system, and so let's use a um, instantaneous tankless water system here. So we're going to make a copy of uh, this last Scheme 7 and do um, solar hot water. Uh, that should be enough. And as part of that we're going to put in the right kind of water heater. So let's use an instantaneous inline gas hot water heater. That's number five. Uh, it, notice that when you do that it will upgrade the uh, energy factor and other terms in the, this uh, screen. When we go to next we have the option of actually using um, manufacturers data on various hot water systems. Uh, if you click on this button, you end up going to the Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration Institute screen where all of this basic data is listed. This next screen is the Solar Hot Water System screen. So let's start by putting in three panels. Uh, HEAT has figured out the best tilt angle and orientation, and it's using a generic collector. Um, solar systems inevitably need a tank, uh, and it's picked the right kind of tank to go along with our um, instantaneous hot water system. Let's do a calculation and see how well that one worked. Well, that made a significant difference. Uh, so that was a good decision. Let's move ahead and probably uh, add some photovoltaics. We're going to make a copy of this last scheme eight. and we're going to add PV. By the way, we also could have gone to this screen, which is the Solar Rating Certification Council website and gives you exact data on any number of manufactured panels. We are using a generic panel here now. On this screen, uh, let's design the PV system. We'll put in 16 panels, which is a little bit less than the typical California um, system, which is usually around 3.8 uh, kilowatts. Now you can see that, in fact, we have produced a zero net energy house. This is one that produces 588 kilowatt hours per year in excess of what it actually consumes. We could go on and show a few other screens. Um, let's um, take a look at electric rates. If you happen to be in Southern California Edison Service Territory, you can change the electric rates here. Um, look at your electric bill and see what you're actually paying. Edison has 16 different rate structures for different parts of its service territory. Um, you could 
put in electric rates for Sacramento Municipal Utility District if you happen to be there, or San Diego Gas and Electric. You can also add uh, fuel rates for, uh, in this case, Southern California Gas or Pacific Gas and Electric, whichever you happen to be in. Um, and you can add uh, pollution emissions uh, loading ratios. For example, Southern California Edison system-wide produces about 665 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. Uh, that helps us decide how much carbon this house accounts for by virtue of its design. The same thing can be done for fuel. In this case, uh, this is the national average for uh, natural gas. This next screen uh, addresses code compliance. It's one of the main reasons why people actually do energy performance of buildings. HEED is not a code compliance tool. HEED is a design tool which lets you try all sorts of alternatives and compares them and shows you in detail many different aspects of building performance. Once you have that building that you like, Go to this screen and it will automatically transfer your building to a certified code compliance tool such as in this case Energy Pro. And Energy Pro will generate the forms uh, necessary for you to get a building permit. Now this is completes all of the uh, screens in the advanced design uh, menu list. There are a couple of other screens that are of some interest in this general area. Let's go down and take a look at the HVAC system sizing. This is under the evaluation menu. And here we see the size um, using what's called manual J calculation for the heating system and a simulated cooling system size. Um, so this is about a two ton air conditioner and an 18,000 BTU furnace. This is the electric charges screen, and it is a annual electric bill that showed you how much electricity you used. In this case, your house used the equivalent of $456 worth of electricity. But because you had a 3.7 kilowatt PV system, it actually generated $916 worth of electricity and pumped the difference into the grid. So if your utility had agreed, they would have paid you $460 for the electricity that you contributed uh, to the, in this case, Southern California Edison electric grid. Um, extra energy that you generate with a solar hot water, water system can't be pumped back into a grid exactly. So this is a representation of fuel cost deferred, if you will. Here's the annual fuel cost bill, um, which was $203, except that it does not include so $65 worth of cost that would have been saved by your solar hot water system. The rest of this fuel is for things like cooking and for gas dryers and things like that. The last screen we'll show you is the performance data spreadsheet. So if you haven't had enough numbers already, this will um, give you uh, Excel spreadsheets for all of the performance data that we've showed you up to now. This concludes our third tutorial in the series. Here is the website where you can download free copies of HEED and all of our other energy design tools. He was developed by the Energy Design Tools Group at UCLA. It was funded by California ratepayers, and it was produced under a contract with the California Energy Commission. Future tutorials will explain HEED's other features to help you design more comfortable and more energy efficient buildings. Thanks very much for watching.